covenant theology versus dispensational. I mean, the the I mean, in some ways, it seems like, and maybe I'm just out of the loop a little bit, but some of the discussion is sort of just almost receded from, you know, from the field of discussion a whole lot compared to certainly during the, you know, middle of the 20th century, you had mm-hmm. all these debates mm-hmm. going back and forth and people were interacting with each other. It almost seems as if, uh, you know, clearly covenant theology in some ways has carried the day, but somewhat imprecisely, it seems. I mean, I I think in terms of actually defining it, it's, you know, it's a lot of people would embrace it sort of, but but almost in a an, uh, an imprecise way. What would you say is sort of the heart? I mean, it, you know, what, I mean, Ryrie used to talk about the sine qua non of mm-hmm. dispensationalism. Is right. there a sine qua non of covenant theology? Well, I think you'd have to start with the affirmation of the three covenants of covenant theology. I mean, when you, when you look at their covenants, I mean, you have a, a covenant of redemption where, you know, supposedly there's a, a covenant between the members of the Trinity as far as the salvation right. plan. Then there ends up being a covenant of works, which uh, allegedly, you know, Adam was under, where salvation was by works and obedience and righteousness that he right. was supposed to earn. Right. And then when he failed that, therefore a man went under what was called a covenant of grace, where salvation at that point would become salvation by uh, grace through faith alone. Right. So, I mean, so obviously your a covenant theologian is going to, you know, uh, affirm those covenants, although historically there's been some, some will accept two of the three or others will give different names to those covenants. Right. I personally think that the most essential aspect coming from covenant theology, although it's not necessarily totally unique to covenant theology, is their view of how the New Testament and the Old Testament work together. Mm -hmm. I see all covenant theologians as teaching some sort of New Testament priority in which they believe that the New Testament is the the interpretive lens of the old, so much so that the, the meanings of Old Testament passages aren't really found in the meaning of the Old Testament passages, but in the alleged New Testament interpretations and reinterpretations. Right. That's how come they can end up having non-literal fulfillments of physical and national promises of the Old Testament because they believe that the New Testament is actually transcending or fulfilling those things right. in different ways. So I would actually say their hermeneutic of how the new uses the old is very central in, in, in what they come up with. And, and obviously they're, with their concept of the covenant of grace, they're gonna emphasize that the covenant of grace must mean that there's a unity within the people of God, so much so that you can't have any sort of distinctions between right. Israel and the Gentiles and Israel and the church because that violates this overriding unity. Right. Of which as a dispensationalist, I would say um, there's both unity and diversity within the people of God. We're all saved the same way by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone and what he's done. But there can still be di- ethnic diversity and functional diversity. Mm-hmm. So as I guess I'm getting a little bit of evaluation. I, I would see that I think that covenant theologians err in that by emphasizing unity within the people of God, they don't understand that there can be ethnic, ethnic and functional distinctions within the people of God. Right.